Last year, one of the most anticipated annual sporting events was taken from us due to COVID-19. The making of this video. Just kidding. Triggering, trolling, and angering fan bases is an integral part of the NCAA tournament. Because when your team gets matched up with whoever the winner of the Horizon League is and you need to talk some quality smack, well, that's why you came here, isn't it? I'm so glad the tournament is back. It's time to piss people off. Triggering all 68 NCAA tournament team fan bases is coming up right after this. This video is sponsored by Manscaped.com. It's March, and you know what that means. Balls are gonna be bouncing everywhere. And I'm not just talking about the large leathery ones. Wait, yes I am. In honor of the return of March basketball, our teammates over at Manscaped.com has put together the ultimate male grooming package for your round balls down below. Look, if you're gonna take shots from way downtown, it's best to keep yourself from getting triple teamed by disgusting hair, chafing, and odor that is trying to block you from scoring. Look here at the perfect package, which features the Lawnmower 3.0, the cordless waterproof electric trimmer with skin safe technology that keeps your area smooth and standing tall down in the low post. Add in crop mops, aloe infused ball wipes, which defend against odor and chafing. Now you're covered on all ends of the floor. So after this video, take it to the rim and head on over to manscaped.com forward slash five points and get 20% off your order and free shipping to anywhere around the globe. Again, that's manscaped.com forward slash five dash points from the link below. As a double bonus, every purchase from Manscaped goes towards contributions made to the Testicular Cancer Society. Literally, let's save some balls. Manscaped.com. Ah, the best of the MEAC, which is like winning an ugly contest. Speaking of ugly, how about that time in 2018 rival Hampton blew you out by 30 points? Everything about your basketball program can be summed up with this free throw attempt in 2012. From final four to first four, my, have the mighty fallen. Speaking of that, you're about to get pelted in this tournament like Greg Marshall spotting one of his players getting out of line. You went 20 seasons without a winning season. You had one with Keno Davis, lost on a buzzer beater. Davis immediately left, and then you went another 10 years of sucking. Wait, how are you guys even in this tournament at 12 and 10? That's pathetic, but hey, this is your third trip to the first four, which has to count for something. It doesn't. You're usually target practice for number one seeds, like in 2017 when UNC beat you by 51 points. That team had a record of 16 and 20. A 30 point home loss to Iowa earlier this year didn't stop you from getting in on just your reputation or a 30 point loss to Rutgers. Still neither as bad as losing to a 15 seed in a year you were supposed to win it all. John Wooden must be spinning in his grave, missing the tourney five times in 10 years leading up to this lackluster appearance. It seems like you are stuck in a place you don't want to be, like Leangelo Ball. Hey, it's only been 25 years since you were last here. I guess you could say there is quite the rivalry between you and the City Six with a combined record of 28 and 94 against them and one and 11 versus Villanova. Sucks to be the worst team in Philly. I'd give your chances this year of making it out of the first round about as likely as you beating Cincinnati. How about giving up a 40 nothing run to Ohio earlier this season? I mean, you were down 86 to 25. Stop the count. Other than appearing on a frat boy's hat as a that's what she said level joke, what are you even remembered for? How about the Dick Fick era, a 64 and 101 record in the 90s? More like less head, am I right? It's amazing an online university is somehow good at athletics. Just don't celebrate your wins too hard or else the campus spies might write you up for a noise violation or drinking alcohol. Congrats to Liberty and Jerry Falwell for once again making it back to the pool. Ah yes, the Beavers. Remember the Orange Express from the early 80s when you were actually good and were a top seed? No, that's because those wins were vacated following a scandal. So it's like it never happened. 
Your coach is named Wayne Tinkle, something beavers have been known to do. Speaking of vacated wins and the color orange, let's not forget about Syracuse, who got caught in a scandal involving the YMCA that got wins erased and Jimmy Beheim suspended. My advice is to continue to rely on the coach's son to get you anywhere, buddy. What can I say? At least you aren't as bad as the football team. First time back in the dance in 30 freaking years, and you got in as a pity selection at 14 and 10. This squad is about as unimpressive as Eddie Jordan's Rutgers coaching career. Well, you might have made it into the tourney last year if you weren't banned for violations from boosters taking recruits to strip clubs and handing them wads of ones. Which I guess doesn't matter because the tourney got canceled anyways. That's an L like the 2004 final. Oh, you guys again. You better hope Sister Jean called in another favor from the heavens above to vault you to victory. Otherwise, you'll return to the wormhole of being the most obscure team to ever win a natty. Okay, it's really impossible to hate on a 101-year-old nun who just loves basketball. What a break to draw a shitty team in Rutgers in the first round. I don't see you going far. Brad Brownell is the epitome of mediocre. You know what's bad? A 59-game losing streak to the Tar Heels in Chapel Hill. Does Clemsoning include basketball? Tate George thinks so. Boy, you really got screwed out of a number one seed last year. A 30-2 record, all for naught. Kind of like those other years you won 30 games and didn't get past the Sweet 16. Ah, uh, yes, the lol and tears. Amazing you have never once been to a Final Four despite 21 trips to the dance. Remember in 2010 when you had a promising squad, but a traffic stop involving a gun and weed got your best player Tyler Smith dismissed from the team? That season ended painfully with Scotty Hobson missing a free throw and then a bad foul. Sad. Aren't you guys supposed to be banned this year after former assistant Lamont Evans took heaps of bribes? But apparently all you have to do is file the right paperwork and you're right back to dancing. Proving consequences mean absolutely nothing to the NCAA. Enjoy your sixth consecutive first round loss. Wait, Bob Huggins is still there? In 2006, it looked like you were headed to overtime when Kevin Pitsnoggle hit a three, but moments later, Kenton Paulino did this to you. You had Akeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler and you still didn't win a natty? How? Forget about that. I want to talk to Kelvin Sampson, who flew you to the moon in 2019, only to be knocked out in the third round after a 33-win season. Doctor said I need a bacchiotomy. I can't think of any of your alumni doing anything really, really stupid lately. The last time you were a number one seed, you made it all the way to the final, and you were outran by the Tar Heels in 2005. So close. Sneaky Iona Gales hiring dirty old Rick Patino, thinking nobody would notice. How's it feel to have to take a shower after every game knowing that Slimeball is your coach? He can probably use this one year of getting you back to the dance to move on to a major program as both fans and the NCAA have complete memory loss when it comes to scandals. Your first trip to the dance was two years ago when you matched up with the team with the same nickname and Kentucky treated you like a bowl of friskies to the tune of a 79 to 44 L. Enjoy a similar fate this year, kitties. Oh, the school whose gym used to host the ACC tournament. That's all I know about you. Really, you're that nondescript, 0-3 in the tourney and never higher than a 13 seed. You've been the Southern Conference's doormat for pretty much your entire existence. Do you know what I don't recognize, Patrick? The Hoyas having to backdoor their way into the tournament after being so shitty all year. Really, a 13 and 12 record and the rest of the Big East laying down like Vladi Divac in the paint? Still, the most triggering thing is the refs robbing Allen Iverson of a deep run against UMass in 1996. Any Hoya fan is seriously angry right now. Yes, you defected to the Big Ten because football? Or was it the real reason? Tired of taking whoopings from UNC and Duke? Hey, if you can't beat them, leave them, right? You're barely in this tournament. Enjoy your high taxes. In 2000, as a 12 seed, you took Kentucky to the brink, an 80 to 85 double overtime loss. Good effort, but L's like that sting, especially when you should have won that game. Twice. I wanna know whose PR team Will Wade hired. This dude is more deft at parrying allegations than Andrew Cuomo. He was setting up payments for recruits, got caught, and other than a suspension for not attending a meeting, got to keep his job. 
both amazing and embarrassing. Even worse, Tony Benford is probably a better coach than Wade. He did the actual coaching in 2019. Remember that time when you had a stacked roster and were a shoe in to make a run to the natty and all you had to do was beat some community college from Northern Virginia? Whoops. Or remember this buzzer beater in 1990? Fast forward where Kevin Alley was caught cheating but you gave yourself a slap on the wrist and should not be in this tourney. Dignity is overrated. The biggest scandal to rock BYU's basketball program? Brandon Davies getting laid. Legit, this guy got kicked off the team for admitting he banged his girlfriend. Probably cost them a number one seed. Well, not for Brandon. Just kidding, that's not the biggest scandal. The school had to vacate 47 wins because of paying former guard Nick Emery. Damn, they out here paying short white guys. When was the last time the buffs were relevant at any sports? The last two times you guys made the tourney, you were blown out by a combined 36 points. You're so uneventful, you suck at even being made fun of. In the last 10 years, you've made some deep runs, only to choke it away two times to double-digit seeds Xavier and VCU. Your record against Duke is also pathetic, 9 and 40. Wait, you had Kevin Durant, DJ Augustine, and Damian James, and the furthest you got was the Elite Eight. You guys busted out the checkbook for Shaka, and he delivered you a championship. An NIT championship. Oh, I know what will trigger you. Bringing up Northern Iowa. Boy, that Avery Johnson experiment really worked out, didn't it? Also, at one point during his tenure, because of a brawl and injuries, the Tide were forced to put only three players out on the court. Poor Avery. Ah, the only field of play where you can beat Ohio State, and you still have a losing record against them. Your recent deep run in the tourney all the way to the final in 2018 ended with a blowout and John Beeline ghosting for the NBA. His legacy is left with never winning the big one. So close. Twice. Congratulations, Hartford, on your first NCAA tournament bid. Your reward, getting beat by the number two overall seed. Better watch nothing but the movie Hoosiers all week before the game. Who names their kid Oral? This is the equivalent of Joel Osteen starting a college, putting an emphasis on basketball, and committing themselves to being double-digit seeds and getting blown out in the first round every year. Toothpaste University. In 1986, you went 1-24. In fact, from 1982 to 1990, you never won more than 8 games in a year and averaged 20-plus losses for 10 years. Your record isn't much better than that for a nearly 30-year period. Legit trash. Ah, the Mean Green. Your first appearance in 11 years. You seem to lose to Drake a lot. Get used to it in the tourney. One tournament win in your entire history. 14 years ago, you are the definition of chum to be sent to the opening round sharks. Oh, that win? It allowed Greg Marshall to use you as a stepping stone. Actually, you dodged one there. You've never produced an NBA player in your entire history. Pathetic. A surprising amount of tourney appearances for the Aggies over their history. All of them L's. Well, except for one 20 years ago. I guess you're okay with being the third best team in Utah, which I wouldn't be proud of. It must suck that your in-state rival actually won a natty while all you can do is harken back to the days when Michael Vick was your quarterback. Let's bring up the James Johnson era. Buzz Williams was a good hire until he left you for Texas A&M. It's good for you to be back because 2018 really sucked when you missed the tourney for the first time in 17 years. The year prior, this happened. Back-to-back -back Final Fours ended pretty sadly. Come on, you lost to Duke and gave them another natty. That's unacceptable. I know two words that can trigger a heel fan. Matt Doherty. No, wait, wait, wait. Chris Jenkins. I guess that's karma for widespread academic fraud resulting in zero punishment. For a team that usually carries title expectations, an eighth seed is poor by your standards. Oh, I forgot two more words. Weber State. Eddie Munster finally left you in 2015 to go coach the Thunder after a low effort checked out season. Let's bring up some heartbreaking losses. 2010 BYU in overtime, 2011 to 8 seed Butler in overtime, 2014 to 7 seed UConn, and 2017 to 7 seed South Carolina. The Sting. 
Yeah, you got lucky with Chris Beard, but the 16 years before that were bizarre. Bobby Knight never getting over the hump, his son equally inept, Billy Gillespie in a stopover, and Tubby Smith's one tournament appearance. All that led to a heartbreaking loss last year to UVA. Gotta win them when you have the chance. That's more sad than triggering. Yeah, you've been good, but both in 2015 and 2017 as number one seeds, you didn't make it out of the opening weekend. Way back in 2003, you got caught making illegal phone calls. Okay, I'm reaching here. Screw you, Jay Wright, and your perfect hair. The Boilermakers, consistent in making the tournament, consistent in failure. Two of the worst being a double overtime loss to Little Rock in 2016 and a blowout to 11 seed VCU in 2011. And that OT loss to UVA in 2019 stung too. You made a Final Four 41 years ago when Gene Cady thought he was fooling someone with this comb over. Been some dark days since Nolan Richardson was your coach, especially the way he left the school, essentially daring them to fire him. So they fired him. The team has been average to boring ever since, kind of like the entire state of Arkansas. Oh look, you and Michigan are Eskimo brothers when it comes to having one natty and constantly choking in the Final Four or not even getting there when a team of shockers bounced you in the Elite Eight in 2013. A first round loss to Siena in 2009 is the cherry on top of the choke cake. The most cursed team from accidents to scandal. Now is your turn to be a number one seed and choke early like you did against South Carolina in 2017. It wasn't even close either. No matter what happens, you still have to return to Waco where the most known thing there is your school, a cult that was burnt to a crisp and Chip and Joanna Gaines. Is this even an actual school? The Antelopes? And why didn't anyone tell me Dan Marley used to be your freaking coach? For seven years, he's also suing the school for back payments. Oh, Bryce Drew is the coach now. Enjoy your slaughter. The student section at E-Dub is called the Fight Club. Damn it, I just violated the first rule. Yep, you're another team that will face the firing squad in the first round against Kansas. Your home court should be bright red like your god-awful football field. You had UNC on the ropes and let them get away in 2012 and took the tourney off until now. You might get lucky against UVA, either that or catch COVID. The gauchos are here? You aren't too busy suntanning and wearing your bikinis to class to play ball? I'm sure your most famous alum Jim Rome is rooting for you, but even he has to be realistic about your chances to advance, which are zero. Every time you get momentum, your head coach leaves you like that snake Will Wade or that traitor Shaka Smart. Alumni Mike Rhodes isn't likely to leave, but he gets harshly criticized by the fan base when he doesn't meet unrealistic expectations. Let's not bring up giving up a four point play to Stephen F. Austin when fouling was literally the dumbest thing you could do there. Does Norfolk State ring a bell? Oh, how about 1994 when you got blown out by Arizona? But that doesn't officially count because Quinn Snyder was cheating. Back to Norfolk State, you were 21.5 favorites in that game, the largest point spread upset in tournament history. A lot of you don't remember 1988 when you blew it to Danny Manning and Kansas in the final. So let me bring up something more recent. Getting the absolute doors blown off of you by Villanova in the 2016 National Semifinal. A historic 95 to 51 ass whipping. You let eventual champion UNC off the hook in the 2017 Final Four, losing in the final moments to a team that was struggling. Maybe your best chance to win the Natty since you won the first tourney in 1939, which had a total of eight whole teams. Yeah, that doesn't count. Nope. Let's see which is worse, a buzzer beater loss to Georgia Tech in 1992 or your handling of OJ Mayo. The Mayo scandal ended up costing you Tim Floyd, which got you USC legend Kevin O'Neill. Looks like I don't need to troll the Blue Jays. The committee already did that by making you a five seed and just begging you to be an upset victim to a team more interested in drinking margaritas by the beach. The defending champs. Good for you. But what happened the year before that? Does anyone remember? Winning the Natty doesn't erase literally the biggest choke job in the history of the tournament or maybe even sports. Yes, this roasting is as boring as your pack line defense. I don't care, you lost to a 16 seed. It's never happened and maybe never will again. Hello, Goliath, meet David. His name was VCU, Bucknell, Wichita State, Bradley, Rhode Island, and Northern Iowa. Hey, you forgot UTEP. 
Recruiting violations that were swept under the rug have you wanting to check yourself. Okay, that was a terrible joke. You're more used to losing to number two seeds than being one. The last time you were seeded this high, you blew it to Northwestern State. And finally, the number one overall seed of triggering. The first team to be categorized as a mid-major, that is now a major. Gonzaga has done everything right where other schools have failed. They have managed to keep their coach, Mark Few, in their small school despite numerous offers. They have managed to recruit top talent to an obscure city in the Northwest. Despite not even playing in a brand name conference, they have managed a number one seed four times. One thing they have not managed is to win shit. Yes, they came close in 2017, but that has been their only Final Four appearance in all these 28 to 30 plus win seasons, beating the F out of their WCC opponents and then crumbling in the second round of the tournament, sometimes even the first round. Honestly, 2017 was more surprising in the fact that y'all didn't choke. Who knows which Gonzaga we will get this year, but I got some tough words for the fan base. If history is any indication of the future, you'll be out of the dance after the opening weekend. Fight me. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, unless you're a Duke fan. Haha, <laughs> suck it. I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to my next video.